Nana Tibu Soa and I will new go to Amushi, a year Richard Jappa, any cousin, a case of any cousin, a year judge, a what see as a Muslim OD, a year justice, a year Kulindi, or no swabber out out of a church and let the new Muslim account some you say from his own aspect, no, yet to send and summon the airport, and some or can not to say, eh, eh, often that you say, and some in where the air at the Eddie are by the call, or would see a justice, a Kulindi in some are all can. There was a lawyer standing. Uh, they were standing right. Ladies, I mean, they fit up again. They were standing right there. Is a lawyer. He's standing there. He didn't know that evidence doesn't mean that when you submit the evidence, it means that the court thinks that the court is admitting it because they think that what you are saying is right. When you go and write a police statement and the police accept the statement that you've written, it means that everything you've written and the police agree with you. Some more Jamesy. Why? What is this? Is so basic. You go to police station, you write a police statement, you sign it. That is your statement. You are sworn to that statement. It doesn't mean that is the position of the police. The police will go through a painstaking investigation, finish, prepare a docket. In the docket, they may say that statement of Paul Abimotri to be discarded. He was lying in everything he said. It doesn't mean they didn't admit it. That something has been admitted does not mean that it is what you think it is. Eventually, the judge, and in any case, the judge in admitting it told us. Let's admit it. If you don't take a break, then we come and deal with it. Play it, play it again. Those who have just joined. tell you the other good things about the ruling, which we agree with. What we agree with and commend the judge for was number one to admit exhibit C A F two, CAF two, which is the audio recording the NBC put out, which Mr. Jackpa annexed to no honorable mm -hmm. mm -hmm. annexed to his supplementary affidavit. That audio recording they've been. They've been saying that it is doctored and all that. They couldn't say that it is doctored in court. They've been challenging its authenticity in the media. They couldn't say that in court. So it was 26 minutes. The Godfrey Dami himself, whose voice is on it? The go Mr. Godfrey Dami himself, whose voice is on it? He could not swear an affidavit to dispute the tape. He had to shift responsibility to a principal state attorney who was not on the call to make denials. Now the court says, I have listened to you. There are exceptions to the rules of privacy under Article 18.2 and 12.2. Public interest issues of crime. I am admitting that evidence. That is a heavy blow for Godfrey Dame, who has been trying to escape accountability and has been sponsoring his assigns and highlands like Nana B and Paula Domotri to be saying in the media that the tape is doctored, it is not admissible and all that. Now that argument has fallen flat. They have eggs all over their faces. The tape has been admitted and that is why the judge made copious reference to it in delivering this ruling. And you've seen the line of course examination. More tapes are coming up. More tapes are coming up. Is it what I'm talking about, Samuel JP? I, 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 it's, it's almost like a sweet and sour because all of us are Pastor Chris people, you see. You know Pastor Chris Oyakilomi? Yeah, we all swear by his name. But uh, now I'll tell you, viewers, the last time I saw Sami Jinfi, it was in, um, in Kumasi. I was coming from Kumasi. He also was coming from Kumasi to Accra. Then uh, I, I got into the aircraft first. So when he came, when he was walking past me, I punched his tire and I said, hey, let's uh, look at you. Then I showed him. I just bought a book. I, I like to buy books anywhere I go. So I just bought a book at the Kumasi airport. I said, look, look at this book. Have you seen the topic? Then he looked at it. They said, what did I get? I said, I got it from here. Then he said, don't go and use it to do mischief. I said, I will use it. Pa. I'm reading it for you people. That's the last conversation we had about two or three months ago. So he knows that these things are coming. He knows that we rely on documentation. He knows because he told me that I'm going to use the book for missive. I promise him that I will use it. I will very use it. Now, the, let, let's get to the judge. Let's get to the judge. My producer advises me that we shouldn't take the break because our viewers are interested in hearing the matter. So let, let me push the break forward and then uh, kick start. That I have listened to the audio 10 times. Attorney General did not tell Jaqua to implicate Atto Forsen. The, 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 the whole government of Jaquette's case in this cross-examination that's going on, mind you, next week, the Attorney General will cross-examine Jaquette. You, 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 have to, you have to be there. And we're going to apply again for media. You have to be there. When Godfrey Dami faces Jaquette in the witness box to ask him questions, you will just have to be there. But let's do what happened today. Now, the Leonard trial judge has already um, indicated, hasn't she? She's indicated that she has listened to the tape 10 times and that Jaqua did not implicate Atto Forsen. That's what she said. So the value that, that uh, Samuel Jinfi and co are placing on the ad ad admissibility or the tape being admitted 
they should have at the back of their minds. As an electoral judge had already indicated after her acquaintance with the tape, she's indicated the value of what's on the tape. Because on the tape, the main thing they are saying is this that that uh, that uh, 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 Mr. Jackpa says that the attorney general was sort of coercing him and cajoling him to implicate Mr. Forsen. Leonard trial judge has already said that in this court in a separate application that he's listened to it and that's that is that is not borne out by the tape. From the other matter on the tape, the learned trial judge has also indicated that it's not a matter for her court. So really, if she admits such a tape and you come and do a press conference with lawyers gathered around you and you say that because the tape has been admitted, whereas the Attorney General and his people raise opposition to admitting the tape based on Article 18 of the Republican Constitution, that the judge thinks that the Republican Constitution is not enough to stop her from admitting the tape and that she admits the tape, you say that because the tape has been admitted, it's not doctored. Because the tape has been admitted, everything on it is true. Because the tape has been admitted, everything on it will be taken into account. That which will be taken into account has already been told by the judge to the general public that I have listened to the audio 10 times. Attorney General did not tell Jackpot to implicate force. Him. That's the end of the story. I don't know how come that sometimes these propagandists who are supposed to be uh, very sharp at picking signals from sentences, picking signals from people's words, and picking signals all over the place, do not see these signals when they are given to them. And then they actually see it in the reverse. They think that there's something fantastic to celebrate, that, that her leadership has admitted the tape, or the tape that Paul Abimotri said that it is, it is a, uh, friend then, the tape that he said that it is a doctor, no, the, the learned trial judge has admitted it, so we are happy. Okay, Jakpa said a lot more that is important today than tape matters. Jakpa here says he's met the attorney and he's speaking in cross examination to his own lawyers that he's met the attorney general so many times. Well, there's been speculation and good evening, Joy FM. Your speculation about the judge and which judge it is has come to an end. Today, in the court, Mr. Lieutenant Jakpa has said that the trial, uh, the, the, the Supreme Court judge in whose home they met is his lordship Justice Yoni Kulendi. He said that. So, Joy FM, please, speculation has ended. Even though Jakpa said it on the tape, you will say you didn't hear it. So, you kept repeating. I was listening and it was worrying me. Kept with the, the judge whose name has not been mentioned. The judge whose name has... It was getting too much because as journalists, we pick the story, we run with it. When the guy has given you the story, don't keep your audience waiting and don't keep your audience thinking. Just tell them. But you didn't want to do that. Today, fortunately or unfortunately, Mr. Jakpa says that meetings occurred in Justice Kulendi's house. Mr. Jackpa has made even more serious allegations about the, th the conversations that they had in Justice Kulendi's house. First, though, let's go to how the judge admitted the tape in evidence today. Let's see it. What did she say? Yes. This is the ruling on admissibility of the tape, which occurred today in court. Now, she says as follows. She says, there's no doubt that the foundational matter to determine is the relevance of the recording to the trial. She is agreeing in that sentence with the prosecution who made the point that there is a relevance question to be answered. That if you answer the relevant, if you look at the relevance question, you are very likely to answer it in the negative. That's the point that she's making. That's the point that is being made here. She says, there's no doubt that the foundational matter to determine is the relevance of the recording to the trial. Once admitted, including electronic evidence, it will fall on the weight. That is to say, first level is to admit once you have admitted, you will then consider the weight of the evidence, the weight of the material in it. The considering the weight is not just to be understood as the English weight, as in the, the, how heavy it is. No. The weight also speaks to whether it's been doctored, whether it is relevant, whether the things on it can do something to the case. All of those things is yet to be determined. That's the important part. That's what Samit Devish you here. Admissibility of the tape doesn't mean that the weight on the tape has yet been determined. The weight on the tape is yet to be determined by the courts through processes. If the court takes the tape, they can call a forensic person. Say, forensic, come and have a look at it. The court will then come and tell the, 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 the general public that the forensic man said that it is doctored. However, the forensic man will be put in the box to be cross-examined, etc., etc. Haven't we seen this happen all the time? Okay, let's move on.
He says, the court has referred to several cases, including the Raphael Kubaji case and the McPalm case, having concluded that on the allegation for which McPalm and co. were arraigned and the public interest, it was necessary to admit the recording in spite of the rights to privacy. Right to privacy is one of those exceptions that was pleaded by the Attorney General's office, that the tape, uh, admitting the tape will violate the right to privacy. A uh, 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 the judge, is saying that in spite of the privacy which she recognizes, there's another reason why she wants to admit it. And she cites the case of Rafael Kubaji and Makpam, about which many lawyers are seized with the facts when it comes to the evidence and admissibility of material. Okay, it goes on. It says that in spite of the right to privacy of the accused person and the manner in which the recording was done. Okay. It goes on. Reverse position where it is not a law enforcement agency that is tendering the recording, but an accused person against a law enforcement agency. The reason why she's put the sentence there is that in the cases she's referred to, Rafael Kubaji and the McPalm case, the tapes in those cases was, were, were tendered by the prosecution not by the accused person. So she's saying that even though we have a reverse position here where the, the, the tape is being, tendered by, um, is being tendered by the accused person as opposed to the prosecution, she would still admit it even though it's reversed. So she's trying to suggest that the little distinction you see in the uh, Rafael Kubaji and the McPalm case, which is that the person tendering was on the prosecution side and now the person tendering is on the defense side, that should not be sufficient to distinct from uh, that should not be sufficient to distinguish it she will still admit it anyway all right let's move on if the recording was being submitted by the state's agency in the present circumstances, the tape will have likely been admitted. Okay. The pen drive containing the recording is admitted into evidence by court. The admitted record shall be assessed based on the evidential weight of the recording. I think Samit Jeffy didn't hear this last sentence when he sat in the court and the lawyers around him also didn't hear it or they heard it and they were not listening. Maybe they were listening to uh, the guy who sang the song. What's his name? Asidel. Uh, Palota, maybe they were listening to Palota's music in there. Yeah, I like listening to music in my ear when uh, I sit in places like that. So maybe they were doing that. So they didn't hear it. It says the admitted record shall be assessed based on the evidential weight of the recording. What it means is that, and that's the last, last sentence on the screen, viewers, if you, if you saw it. What it means is that the admitted record is yet to be assessed. The admitted tape and record, according to the court, is yet to be assessed. Can you knock on Samit Jeffy's door and tell him that he should go back for his evidence and have a look at it? And you don't even need evidence. It's common sense, isn't it? You don't need evidence decree. You don't need any training evidence to know that. Uh, you go to a police, you have an umpire, any umpire, and you submit something to the umpire. Another person submits this to the umpire. One person comes and says, umpire, don't collect this paper. Umpire says, don't worry, I'll collect it. You two bring yours. That means that the umpire is going to necessarily make the conclusion that you think it. I mean, how... Why, why should anybody try and spin with something like this? I mean, is, is that also part of politics? Then I don't want to be part of politics. If this is part of politics, that you can see blue and call it red. I mean, if you are forgotten or you don't understand us, that's forgivable. But this is not the case where people don't understand. This is a case where people are trying to politicize the law so that they will have something to say. Because the, the germane issue from today's trial and the proceedings thereof is that the Supreme Court judge was there when these spurious allegations are being made by Mr. Jack, but the Attorney General said some finance minister, and then today, the, this is the latest one they added that Attorney General said fancies are cheap. I'm not even, I don't even understand that. Oh, these people. Sometimes you feel pathetic. I mean, uh, that I, okay, so let's move on. Uh, these are the points take away from today's situation. He says, Japan met with the Attorney General twice in 2022 in the house of the Supreme Court Judge Justice Yoni Kulendi. Japa claimed that the position taken that the ambulances were not fit for purpose was orchestrated. Fair enough. Japa expressed disappointment that the Supreme Court Judge and the Attorney General purportedly promised that the submission of no case will go in Japa's favor. Really? Viewers, have you seen number three? Really? Jackpot told the court that he was disappointed 
that the Supreme Court judge and the Attorney General appeared to have promised him that his submission of no case will succeed. Ah, is Japa inviting the Supreme Court judge into the trial as well? I think that he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, uh, he's a very uh, ungrateful guy. Japa is an ungrateful guy. Your brother, the Supreme Court judge, has used his good offices with the Attorney General to invite the Attorney General to his house. You, Jakpa, you told the court today that you are the one who called that. Of course, we have the text message. NBC didn't show it. Johnson, I see you Ketia and Sami Jenfi. They didn't show that tape, but we have it. And we have the, 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 I say tape. the text messages. We don't have any tape, oh, please. We don't do tape. The text messages. We showed it. You, Jakpa, here, wrote to the Attorney General by it and said, listen to me because I am Kulendi's brother. That's really, the, that's really what he said. My name is Jakpa. Thank you very much for... Please look for that text. Look for that text and put it on. He said, my name is Jakpa. Thank you very much for saving me or something something about Bill. Please, I would like to see you through my brother. The attorney general says, don't worry. I'll, I'll meet you through your brother. Jakpa is very ungrateful. You would never have had audience with the attorney general. Never would you have had audience with the attorney general. Because of your brother, the attorney general agrees to meet with you. You yourself said that all the meetings were conducted in your brother, the judge's house. You know your brother is not an ordinary person. He's a very distinguished Supreme Court judge. He's a member of the bench. A very, very important one. Then you come to court and come and tell the court that when you met the attorney general in front of your brother, the attorney general told you that the president of the republic wants the matter done in a way that is illegal. And the Supreme Court judge was sitting there. That is Jakpa. You see this kind of people? Jakpa. Your brother is trying to help you. Look at the problem that he's brought to the court. Baseless and unfounded. It's, he cannot even establish it. He didn't record that one. He's just telling the court. And he's telling the court where there are two witnesses. There is the attorney general. And then there is the Supreme Court judge. Should the Supreme Court judge come and say that everything Jakpa is saying is not true? What do we make of him? I know Yoni Kulendi. I do not believe that Yoni Kulendi will host a meeting which is discussing illegality and, uh, and, and shenanigans in court to be perpetrated by the learned attorney general. I do not believe that it will never happen. But that's what Jakpa is saying. Okay, here's a text. 4, 1453. Good afternoon, my bro. I am Richard Jakpa, a junior brother of Justice Kulendi. That is how he introduces himself. Please put, put the text alone on the screen. Let the viewers see it. If, if it I'll decide to open it. Uh, can I open it? Uh, 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 small. I can open it small. This is Richard Jakpa. Look at the way his number is saved on the phone. Richard Jakpa. He says, Good afternoon, my bro. I'm Richard Jakpa. He should have added formally of the Ghana Enforcement, but he didn't add that. It's okay. I am a junior brother of Justice Kulendi. You intervened to secure my bill some weeks ago. I am humbly requesting for a time and a venue at your convenience to meet you for a private discussion, please. Oh, Jakpa. Then he says, I'm most grateful for that kind gesture from you. Hope to hear favorably from you. Then there's a thank you there. Okay. We now know that the Attorney General wrote to him and said that I will contact you through your brother. That one, the NDC showed. I said, you showed us that one. I said, you didn't show us this one, but he showed us that one. He says that uh, I will contact you through your brother. Aha, it is here. Array. Okay, okay. That's you know, his language is better than mine. So he didn't say contact. He said array. He says, I, after the thank you, it continues. He says, I will arrange through your brother. Thanks. Now, viewers, let's put this in proper perspective. Assuming that Richard Jakpa texted the attorney general, please put the first text back on, and said that, my name is Richard Jakpa. I'm the one that you are prosecuting. Can I meet you for a private discussion, please? Viewers, in all honesty, knowing even the little that you know about Godfrey Dami or any lawyer at all, or anybody who becomes attorney general, if you, viewers, if you are the attorney general, will you respond to such a text? I'm the one you are prosecuting. I need to see you for a private discussion, please. You won't not, you wouldn't. Every lawyer, any lawyer trained in Ghana will refuse that. Every lawyer knows that. Sami Jeffy will refuse it. All the lawyers standing behind him will refuse it. But this is the catch. The guy comes to you and says that, Bro, I'm Richard Jakpa, a junior brother of Justice Kulendi. You, the Attorney General, you intervened to secure my bill some weeks ago. I'm humbly asking for a meeting. It is on that basis. And the attorney says, okay, if you say your brother is Justice Kulendi, 
I will contact you through Kolendi because he needs to ascertain that it is true that your brother is Kolendi. So I'm sure he picked his phone and said, My Lord, how are you? He said, Oh, Attorney General, I'm good. Oh. He said, Do you know the, the third accused in this ambulance man? Oh, he's my brother. He said, Well, he's texted me that he wants to meet. So, um, you know, there's plea bargaining if he wants. The second accused is not well, he's gone. So, if you can organize for me to meet with him, I will come meet with him. And just go and do say, Okay, why not? Let's do that. And then they met several times. And then after that, he made a phone call to the Attorney General weeks later. And by the time he was making the phone call to the Attorney General, he already knew the Attorney General's position on some of the things he was going to express. That brings me back to the judge saying that I have listened to the tape several times. I did not hear the Attorney General say that he needs your help to implicate Arthur Fawcett. That brings me back to this. Thank you very much. It brings me back to this. I have listened to the audio 10 times. Not more than several. Several, the mathematicians tell us several means four. Please, can you bring it back? I, I think I touched something. Uh, the mathematicians tell us that several means four. So, uh, ten times is more than several. I have listened to the audio ten times. Attorney General did not tell Jakpa to implicate Atu Fawson. Samuel Jimfi, the National Propaganda Secretary of the National Democratic Congress. Then, he goes to court and says that because the t he closes court and holds a press conference and says that because the tape has been admitted by the judge, therefore, those who said the tape was not good are funny people or have been embarrassed. I mean, he should just have told the audience that, well, today we have come and the tape has been admitted by the judge. That is the first step. We are hoping that after the judge has assessed it, she will come to the same conclusion that we come to, that this tape is something that is relevant for the trial. If you say that at the press conference, no problem. But if you say what you said, that the tape is not doctored because it has been admitted. It just means that you have misunderstood, misapprehended, and completely uh, 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 don't understand the processes of evidence. Not because of the technical evidence decree in court, but just because of the normal way that we do our lives. You, Samuel Jimfi, you sit down there as a propaganda secretary. If the regional youth organizer of uh, Ashanti is fighting with the regional youth organizer of Greater Accra, and they both come to you, and John Muhammad appoints you as an empire, and you tell both of them that writes to me what your claim is and then one writes to you and says that i'm the original commander of uh, i'm the original uh, ndc regional propaganda secretary of greater Accra. when i'm doing my work then the guy in eastern region 2 comes then he's doing this then eastern region 2 brings his document the fact that you receive two documents from two of your subordinates who are quarreling does that suggest that you have agreed with one of them the fact that you admit this one and admit this one samuel jamfi does it mean that you have agreed with either of them are you not now, as an umpire, going to go through the process and make a determination? I mean, what are you talking about? When you go to court and you submit something, it means I... Oh. Anyway, no problem. No problem. Let's move on. Oh, it's five minutes to the top of that at 10 o'clock. All right. I've done 30 minutes of this one. It's too long. Uh, National Propaganda Secretary of the National Democratic Congress. Play that I'm the meeting for the last time. Let's, uh, let's talk about him a bit and then we move on to the, the glorious law house. Let me tell you the other good things about the ruling, which we agree with. What we agree with and commend the judge for was number one, to admit exhibit CAF2, CAF2, which is the audio recording the NDC put out, which Mr. Jakpa annexed to, no, the Honorable Atto Fawcett annexed to his supplementary affidavit. That audio recording, they've been They've been saying that it is doctored and all that. They couldn't say that it is doctored in court. They've been challenging its authenticity in the media. They couldn't say that in court. So it was 26 minutes. The Godfrey Dami himself, whose voice is on it? The Go Mr. Godfrey Dami himself, whose voice is on it? He could not swear an affidavit to dispute the tape. He had to shift responsibility to a principal state attorney who was not on the call to make denials. Now the court says, I have listened to you. There are exceptions to the rules of privacy under Article 18.2 and 12.2. Public interest, issues of crime. I am admitting that evidence. That is a heavy blow for Godfrey Dame, who has been trying to escape accountability and has been sponsoring his assigns and highlands like Nana B and Paul Adomotri to be saying in the media that the tape is doctored, it is not admissible and all that. Now that argument has fallen flat. They have eggs all over their faces. The tape has been admitted, and that is why the judge made copious reference to it in delivering this ruling. And you've seen the line of course examination. More tapes are coming up. More tapes are coming up. We have been told today that more tapes are coming up. More tapes in the cross examination. More tapes. Okay, next week, Tuesday, 
there will be the grandstanding cross examination uh, by the prosecution of uh, Lieutenant Jakba. Okay, what are people saying on the text messages uh, before we go to the glorious law house? Uh, I begin with uh, who? Antoinette, what are people saying? Thank you, Paul. Um, it did not feel God says, Paul, let's tread cautiously. Sami Jemfi has hinted that there are some more tapes to be made public soon. I do believe that once the first one has been admitted in court today, subsequent for any tea for Glendy Akasa, Justice Glendy Akasa area, sorry, and Michelle Menso Makasa area, also a drink to your own science seven and a demonstration. So, we want fair, fair, or comment session. I have and an answer.